Hey everybody, this is Mitch from BoardCo. There's a lot of talk going on nowadays about what boat has the best wake surf wave. A lot of great marketing taglines from companies such as the best wake surf wave the industry has ever seen, the biggest surf wave that you've ever surfed on, the best shaped surf wave ever. Today we want to talk about wake surf waves and what exactly makes the best wake surf wave for you. Hey everybody, we are out here at Lake Powell in a Centurion RI257 and we are going to be talking about wake surf waves. In particular, what is the best wake surf wave in the world? It's a phrase that's thrown around a lot, especially if you go around to different boat dealerships, talk to different people, everyone will always say they have the best surf wave. What does that mean though? Is the best surf wave for me the same as the best surf wave for you? Now, if you're my same build, my same height, my same weight, like to surf on the exact same board that I surf on, that might be the case. But chances are that you don't. And if that's the case, the best surf wave for you might look very different than the surf wave that I like to surf on. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna show you an example of what is going to be the ideal surf wave for a few different people. We can show you the surf wave on a surf style board and for someone that's going to really like to ride an aggressive surf style wave. Show you a skim style wave and how that's going to differ and what a Centurion boat can do to dial in that surf wave. Show you a surf wave for a bigger rider as well as a surf wave for a beginner rider or a smaller rider for kids. The one thing it comes down to is this. The ideal surf wave that you find might not necessarily be the ideal surf wave for everybody on your boat. If you have different people that are different ability levels and like to ride different boards, the ideal surf wave for them is not going to always be the same. And if you have a boat that can only produce one surf wave, that surf wave might be ideal for one person on the boat, but it's definitely not going to be ideal for everyone. We're going to show you what Centurion boats do and how they allow you to create the best possible surf wave for everyone on your boat, regardless of their ability level, their size, what kind of board they like to ride on, or any other factors you may want to throw at them. And we do that purely because of the physics of how this boat creates a surf wave and how it does it differently than any other boat on the water. All right, I am here with Jack Youngquist. He is gonna be jumping out and surfing behind us on a phase five hammerhead. Jack, tell us about the board you're on and what's gonna be kind of unique about it. Yeah, so this is a skim style board and it's about as skimmy as they make it. And what that means is it's really flat, particularly from like right by where your front foot stands to the back of the board. And you rely a lot on the edge to grip into the wave and use your edge to carve and do your turns. There's a little tiny fin in the back here about a one inch fin so that gives me a little bit more traction um, but if you're on a really steep barely wave a lot of times I will find that I slide out on this board so when I go up and I'm relying on my edge and when the weight gets super steep uh, especially coming out of trying to air or different turns I like seriously it slides right out from under me so I like a more mellow long and what I mean by mellow is very um, not steep <laughs> wait yeah wave this guy it's not gonna have like a really vertical angle to it it's gonna be a lo lot more of a rounded rolled over type shape and that's what we're gonna set up for Jack so we're gonna dial on a waveform that's got plenty of mass and plenty of push but it's gonna be a nice smooth rounded shape this is of one particular case where having the biggest wave is actually not really beneficial you want a lot of power you want a lot of length but you don't want a wave that's just super tall and super steep because not only will it just be pushing and shooting you toward the back of the boat, but um, when Jack's riding it, he'll just, like he said, will slide out on the board because he doesn't have a big deep fin. It's also going to make it way easier when you see that he can spin and maneuver on the top of the wave. He's got a nice smooth tabletop rounded surface to do that. And so we're gonna utilize some of the unique features on the Centurion boat uh, hull and surf system to di dial in that surf wave exactly the way he's gonna want it for this skim style board. So, yeah, awesome. Sounds Let's good. Let's do it. Sweet.
All right, Jack, you just got in from riding skim style. Tell us a little bit about the wave you were just surfing on, um, on the phase five hammerhead, the skim style board. Yeah, it was fun. There's so much push all the way back and I could really use some speed from back where the curl is to go all the way up forward in the wave, kind of play around on it, even be up high on it, come down, bring some speed to get way a little off it. Like there's just so much push through the whole thing. Um, but it was really mellow, so I wasn't slipping out, and I was able to carve how I wanted to on that really slippery board. Yeah, there's one of the things that is often misconstrued is it's not just simply a matter of making a way bigger or smaller, or even just more steep or more mellow. One of the things we did for Jack when he was out on that skim style board was we changed the shape of the lip of the wave. So it still had plenty of push and power, especially at the back end of the spectrum of the wave. So it still actually barreled over a little bit at the back end, but towards the front, it had a nice rounded lip section. So you see when he was like popping ollies and, and uh, doing spins, there wasn't like a hard, harsh lip that got in his way. Yeah, it wasn't falling off it. Or exactly, and it wasn't catching you up or, or anything like that. It was just nice and smooth and mellow. And that's gonna be ideal for skim riding um, or even it just as you're getting used to trying new tricks, even on like a surf style board, that, that is pretty similar to a wave that you try to, to ride on. So um, to go along with what we were talking about earlier with you want to have the most ideal wave for you and how you're riding. Um, Jack's gonna jump back out there and even though he's the same rider, he's actually gonna be riding a different board. So yeah. tell us a little bit about what you got right here. So now I have a super surf style board. So there's not hard edges on it. It's gonna be really floaty and fast and I'm gonna rely on these big deep fins to grip the wave. So what I'm gonna have Troy, our driver do, is make the wave a lot steeper with a lot more push so that I can I'll have the ability to ride all the way up it and maybe do some airs uh, because these fins will grip into the wave and it'll just be a totally different experience with a lot more power and push from the wave because uh, that's what I like on a surf style board. Perfect, yes. And Jack's on the Soulcraft Keenan Flegel Pro Model board um, and he's just gonna be able to rip around those big deep fins. We're gonna set up a wave that's really steep, really aggressive, has a ton of power that uh, is not gonna be too much because of the board he's riding on. Because it's got those big deep fins, he can handle it, he's not gonna slide out like he would on that skim style board. So even though Jack is the same rider, he weighs the same amount, we're gonna set up a wave totally different just based on the board he's riding on and the kind of riding that he's going to want to do on that board. Yeah, and the reason I want it shorter and taller is because then I'll have more drive from the back of the wave to get all the way up a taller lip and actually air out of it better. Whereas if I were to ride this board on that same wave, it'd still be fun and I'd be good on it but I don't think I'd be able to pop quite as high because I wouldn't have as much speed coming back up and off a higher lip, so. Yeah. And one of the things that's really great to mention here is yeah, um, as you go out on your boat and ha have a great experience with multiple different board variations, it really opens up what you can do with wake surfing. It's not just simply, hey, I'm gonna go out and ride a board and this is the same wave you always get. If you dial in and get the right kind of board for the style of riding you wanna do at that moment, and then dial the wave in to go with it, it just gives you a way better experience. And as Jack, you'll see, he's gonna be doing way different stuff. He's gonna be riding differently. It's, it's almost like a different sport when he's out there. So, yeah, so way different. Let's, let's get it, make it happen. Sounds good. All right, Jack, you just got in riding your surf style board. Tell us a little bit about what that was like and how it was different than when you were riding your skimboard. Yeah, it's fun because it was so tall that I'd be back in the curl and you just put a little weight on your front foot, shoot forward and you can go right off the top of it. But you're really riding up a whole wave instead of just kind of going up and down a little bit. It's going huge up top and then you can take that speed down low and get further outside of the boat, do bigger bottom turns and just way different style of riding, but it does it so well. Absolutely. So as you can see, we set up a totally different wave, totally different deal, um, just for the board he was riding on it. And it wasn't just that it was taller or, um, or even just steeper. It had a totally different lip shape, had a totally different contour, both at the front of the wave and towards the back of the wave, just to get, get be able to give Jack more power for, for being able to, so that he can utilize those fins and that setup on the board. So. Yeah.
super fun. So awesome. Now that we got that, we're going to jump over and show you some different riders and give you a perspective of how we might set up a wave differently for them versus somebody who's uh, riding that is jack size and jack skill level. All right, we're now here on the back of the boat and Burke is going to jump out and do some surfing for us. Um, as you can tell, Burke's a little bit bigger than, than Jack is. So Burke, tell us a little bit about what board you're riding on and, and what we're going to do differently for you than what we were doing with Jack. For sure. So um, on a good day before lunch, I stand about 6'3 and about 260 pounds. So I like a little bit of a different surf wave than most people do. Um, I need something kind of similar to what Jack was riding with a surf style board, but that's what I'm going to ride all the time. I need a board that's giving me a little bit of good speed. Um, so today I'm riding the brand new 2020 Phase 5 Model X. Um, I ride the bigger version. This one is a 57. Um, so I need that extra surface area. I need to be able to run down the wave a little bit more because of my size. I have a tendency to push through a wave quite often. Love the Centurion wave for how much push I have from bottom to top. So we're going to try this brand new board and uh, try and set it up nice and tall, steep, meaty, and uh, see what we can do. Yeah. So there's a couple of things we're going to do a little differently. Um, so one thing I wanted to point out on is, um, yeah, Burke's riding a little bit bigger board than Jack was on the Model X, but it's not a big board. Like you see a lot of guys that are bigger guys that they're, because of the wave they're on, they're forced to ride like a big long board style ocean board. It's like a six footer. That's not what we're doing here. Um, Burke's on a, a, a surfboard that a smaller person can really easily ride on, but because of the mass of the wave, it's going to help keep him moving along and make it so that he can actually stay on the wave. For the speed aspect, I actually really like the Model X because, I mean, it's still very kind of a, a reminiscent shape of a skimmer. So for sure, I get all of that speed in things and I don't need the extra buoyancy of a surfer. Yeah. So, I mean, those are some of the characteristics that we look at and, you know, I've, I've really grown to like the Model X for that reason. Yeah. So. so the other thing that we're going to do is more setting up the wave. We're going to do it a little differently. We're going to we're going to set up a wave that will fan out a little bit more than the one that Jack was on to give Burke a little bit more power at the back end of the wave so that he, if he fades back a little bit, he'll have more power to get back in, to stay in the pocket and make sure he doesn't fade out. We're also going to make sure that we set it up so that we've got a lot of power up at the top section of the wave. A lot of waves that are out there, they get tall, but they're really thin and narrow at the top. And so we're going to make it so it's set up so it's got a lot of power, a lot of push, so that as Burke comes up on the wave, he's not just going to blast right through and just go go through and fade out the back. So, sweet. This will be fun. Let's go do it. Let's do it. All right, Burke just got in from out there surfing. Burke, tell us a little bit about what you experienced out there on the surf wave on the RI257. Oh, absolutely killer. So as a bigger guy, like I said before, my, my tendency is to push through the top side of a surf wave. So uh, from bottom to top, I had tons of push no matter where I was in the wave. And you saw how far back I could get. I had a lot more playable area behind this boat than I've been accustomed to on pretty much anything else. Um, I'm well versed in quite a few different brands. And I mean, the, the hard facts, the cold hard truth is the, the push in this wave is unreal. I mean, nobody else, no other boat that I've ever ridden has the same sort of push. Yeah, and that's really just what happens when you have 5,500 pounds of ballast in the boat and the amount of displacement that take pla takes place. Um, for a guy like my size, it makes a difference just with how much speed I can gather coming in the wave. It helps quite a bit, but when you get a little bit bigger guy like Bert, it, it really is a game changer for what you can do on a wave. In, entirely. I mean. I, I I have a tough time coming back in the boat when I've been out playing on this surf wave. I just don't want to stop. So. Yeah, and that's the thing is you weren't just hanging out just right here off the swim platform. I mean, you were fading 15 plus feet back behind the boat, just being able to get back on the wave and still have plenty of push to get back in. And as really as a nice. big guy, that's that's creating a totally different dynamic for me behind the boat versus you know other people that are smaller than I am. You have all the room in the world to play. But on most other boats, I just don't have that capability. Yeah. We, the other thing to point out here is when we set up the wave, as we mentioned, we're, we're talking about how we can 
dial in a surf wave for different riders. When we dial in the wave for Burke, it's not like we just slowed it way down and made it way just super tall and super short, because that's not the case. I mean, he had 15 to 20 feet of playable area behind the boat that he could fade back on, use to generate speed. As you progress and get better, you can use it to really do stuff to air off the top of the wave and do all kinds of things. And it's uh, so we, we were able to make it steeper. We we're also able to fan it out a little more and make it a, a, a wider wave as far as just the length so it'll hook around a little bit better um, which in particular for Burke is makes a big difference if you're a bigger guy so yeah being able to look down the side of the boat and see what's going on down there I mean it's it's just totally different like I say I, I keep relating it to the different boats and things but um, by far the funnest wave I've ever surfed awesome well that's fun so um, now, now you got to check that out we're gonna jump to one other surf wave that you can check out that's a little different from this one to give you some perspective on what might be an ideal wave for some other different people that are on your crew all right we're back here at the back now with Lacey Bert just got in the boat and we're gonna set up a wave uh, for her that's a little bit different so Lacey tell us a little bit about what kind of what where you're at with surfing what level you're at and what you're trying to accomplish with out there on board I would consider myself a beginner um, I'm trying to let go of the rope consistently, uh, you know, get the bottom turn, start to learn how to carve and things like that. Just really trying to let go of the rope and just stay going. Yeah, so there's, there's a couple things that we're going to do differently for Lacey. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to mellow out the wave a little bit. So then when she's up coming, when she's going up and down the, the face of the wave, she, it's not just this big cliff that she's going to fall off of. So we're going to mellow it out. But at the same time, we're not gonna mellow out the entire wave. We're just gonna mellow it out towards the front section and we're gonna leave some, some hook at the back of the wave. So specifically, as she fades a little further back, she's not just gonna fall right out the back of the wave. That's one of the problems with making a, a mellow wave on a lot of boats is it's great if you're right up next to the boat and you're moving up and down, but if you fade back at all, you're just right out the back of the wave, especially for beginner level riders. So. And I am goofy too, so we're gonna show the adjustability of switching to the other side. Yeah, so she's gonna jump in and surf on this side. We're gonna dial a wave in for her skill level. She's also a bit lighter, and so we're gonna, we have the customization capabilities to where we don't need to have a big, steep, tall wave. We're gonna mellow it out, but like I said, add some hook at the back end just to give her a little bit of safety net at the back end. Really do some stuff that's unique that we can do for beginners on this boat that isn't available on any other boats out there on the water. Awesome, let's do it. All right, Lacey, you were just out there surfing, doing great um, on the uh, Phase 5 Wahoo. Tell us a little bit about what you were experiencing while you were out there. Um, it was fun. It's kind of frustrating, you know, but it's okay. It's good. I'll get it someday. You, but... You, it, well, you're just getting the feeling of like of yeah. learning how to utilize acceleration, how to put yeah. weight on your front foot versus weight on your back foot, yeah. and just having that control capability so that as you fade further back on the wave, you, and when you move and maneuver that you go to the right body position to stay yeah. in the wave. No, so. but the wave was perfect. It wasn't too aggressive. It was mellow, and this board is an amazing board too. You have the quad fin. You can set it up as the dual fin. Um, it was good. It was fun. Yeah. What we did is we set up the wave so that it was a really rounded, like almost a hump shape towards the front of the wave. But as you get further a bit back, there's a little bit of a hook and a little bit of a barrel. And that's one of the things we we're able to use, utilize the plate systems here on the Centurion that's, they're really unique to dial in that wave shape so that she wasn't going to just fade out the back. When, when Lacey fell out, the, fell out of the wave, she actually went out the top. Um, and, but it's also not something that's just going to make it so that she just slides and falls off the face of the wave. So it's yeah. smooth and mellow, easy to control, but gives you the tools that you need in order to progress and get better. Yeah, right. yeah it's awesome. All right, you were able to check out and see the different waves that we were able to set up for the different riders here that we had. We set up different waves based on their skill level, based on their size, and based on the kind of board that they're riding on. The real message behind this is the ideal surf wave that is out there is going to vary depending on who's back there behind the boat. The ideal wave for Burke was very different than the ideal surf wave for Lacey, and the ideal wave for Jack was different depending on which board he was out there on. This is the thing that is important to take note when you're looking at boats and when you're looking at what kind of a surf wave you want to be, have the ability to create.
the real magic behind Centurion boats and why they are generally considered to be the best surf boats in the world is because they have the ability to put out all of those different wave shapes, all of those different designs and styles to accommodate anybody who gets behind the boat. It's as easy as just pressing a button of surf left or surf right to dish out a great surf wave that's going to rival any other boat out there on the market. But the true secret behind Centurions and why they're the boat of choice of more professional level wake surfers than any other boat out there is because of the true customization capability you can have on these boats. Now I wanted to tell you, tell you a little bit about the features on these boats that allow for that customization that just isn't out there on any other boats. The first thing and the most important thing when we're talking about our wave shaping capability is the hull design that we run on Centurion boats. The Centurion RI series um, that uh, we're sitting in, which features the Centurion Opta V hull, is the seventh generation of hull design that was optimized specifically for wake surfing. Most boat manufacturers take a wakeboard or a water ski hull and put some different contraptions and designs on it to allow the hull to put out a better looking surf wave at slower speeds. We start from the different direction. On Centurions, the hull is optimized for surfing number one, and then we do some different things to it to allow it to wakeboard and water ski better. What you end up with is you end up with a surf hull that has a lot more customization capability than you have on other boats. It's not just simply a matter of slowing down to make the wave taller and steeper or speeding up to make it longer, nor is it just a matter of uh, engaging some sort of a mechanism or device to, to allow the wave to sit taller. It's allowing you to customize the shape of the wave in every single aspect. One of the best examples of how we see this is in an event we call the Utah Surf Fest. It's an event that's been held multiple times here in Utah and allowed people to climb from boat to boat to boat to get behind all of the top boats in the industry and surf behind them and give feedback on what they think. Year over year, Centurions have been rated the highest of all of the boats at the event. It's not necessarily because we have the biggest wave. It's not even necessarily because we have the longest wave. It's because we have a wave that is customizable to exactly what you want. The physics of the hull design that our boat has and the simplicity of the surf systems that we use allow us to contour and shape the wave any way that we want. The water naturally flows off the bottom of the boat in such a way that it's really easy to manipulate and contour. It doesn't require yarring or, uh, or crabbing the boat to one side in order to create a smooth wave. And what you end up with in that case is a wave with more mass, with more power, and that can be shaped to any shape that you want it to be that is going to vary depending on who is getting out there behind the boat. We hope this has been really helpful and that we were able to give you an inside peek on what kind of surf wave you can create behind a Centurion boat. If you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to us. We're more than happy to help, happy to give you information. Check out the videos that we made on how to set up a surf wave on the 101, 201, and 301. They give you the full details on how we do all of the different wave manipulation techniques that are available on any of the Centurion boats, whether you're looking at a VI, FI, or RI series. We appreciate it a ton. Check out boardco.com for more information, and we'll see you later.